sister. Tell the story. The last evening in the year, this cold darkness went. The street, poor little girl beheaded. Beheaded with naked feet. One slipper was nowhere to be found, and the other laid on a hold of a napkin. And off he ran with it. The tiny maiden walked over her tiny naked feet. Were quite red, and blue, and cold. She carried quality of matches in her apron. She held the bundle in her hand, and nobody bought anything for the whole long day. No one given her a single penny. It was Christmas Eve, the last day of the year. It was cold, nearly dark, evening, and the last evening of the year. This cold darkness had been along the street. A poor little girl. She crept along, trembling with cold and hunger. The very picture of sorrow, poor little thing. The flakes of snow covered her long, fair hair, which fell into beautiful curls around her neck. But of that, of course, she never gave a thought, for all the windows and the candles were gleaming, and smelt so deliciously of roasted goose, for we knew it was New Year's Eve. In the corner, two houses, one which advanced more than the other. She sat herself beside and cowered together, her little feet drawn close to her, but she grew colder and colder. And to go home, she did not. She didn't. She had not sold any matches and could not bring a penny home, for her father would certainly give her blows. And at home, it was cold too. She had only the roof. So the whistle, the wind blew, and even though the largest cracks were stopped with uh, straw and grass, her little hands were almost trembling with cold. A match might afford her world of comfort. Take a single one out of the her bundle and draw it up against the wall to warm her fingers by. Oh, how it blazed, it burned, its warm, bright flame like a candle. As she held her hands over a wonderful light, and he seemed really a little mean, as though she were sitting beside a large iron stove with a brass feet and brass ornament on top. The fire burned with such a blessing influence, and it warmed so delightfully. The little girl had already stretched out her hands to warm them, but the small match went out. The stove vanished and she only had the remains of the burnt out match in her hand. She rubbed another against the wall, then burned brightly when the light fell on the wall. There the wall became transparent as a veil, and she could see a room, and the table spread a white, white cloth, and a splendor porcelain service. Roast goose was steaming famously with its stuff and it's more the goose hopped down from the dish, reeling with the floor of a knife and a fork in its breast until it came to the poor little girl. Let her be a child. Nothing but a trick. Cold, damp walls left behind. She lit another one, and there she sat under the most magnificent Christmas tree. Let her be a child. It was so large and more decorations than one she had seen through the glass door in a rich merchant's house. Thousands of lights that burned with the green branches, gaily colored pictures as she seen, and little mane stretched her hands towards them when that match went off. The lights of the Christmas tree rose higher and higher, and she saw them as the stars in heaven when fell down forming a long trail of fire. Someone is dead, she said, for her old grandma, the only person who loved her, who was now no more, had told her that when the stars fell, the soul ascends to God. She drew another match against the wall, and again it was lit, and the luster stood, and the old grandma so bright and radiant, so mild, and such expressed love. Grandma! Take me with you. I'll go when the match burns out. He vanished 
varnished like the warm stove and the delicious roast goose like the magnificent Christmas tree. She rubbed the whole bundle of matches quickly, for she wanted to be quite sure of keeping her grandma near her. The matches gave the bright light, and brighter than the noonday. Never formerly had a grandmother been so beautiful and tall. And both, she took the little maiden on her arm, and then both flew the brightness of joy, high, very high, above the neither cold nor hunger nor anxiety. But in a corner, at the hour of dawn, sat the poor girl, rosy cheeks with a smiling mouth, leaning against the wall, frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. Still in stock sat the child there with her matches, of which one bundle had been burned. She wanted to warm herself, people said. One had a slight suspicion of the beautiful thing she had seen. No one ever dreamt the splendor which her she had entered the joys of the new year. Thank you.